let's take a look at the flying gas station, the KC-135 Strato Tanker. The Boeing KC-135, nicknamed Strato Tanker, is an aerial refueling aircraft that has been in continuous service with the USAF for over 60 years, with over 800 examples of the C-135 series being built. The first jet-powered refueling tanker for the Air Force, the KC-135 was conceived to refuel long-range strategic bombers at the height of the Cold War. However, conflicts such as Vietnam and Desert Storm solidified the Strato tanker's use as a range extender for tactical aircraft and has since become an indispensable asset for the United States and its allies. The KC-135 has some interesting nicknames and facts which may surprise you, including how it launched the airliner revolution. More on that later. KC-135 crews describe themselves as tanker toads. The toads nickname has some interesting origin stories. Some feel that it is a reference to the boom operator or boomer who performs his or her job laying prone and therefore has a similar posture to a toad laying on the ground. Another explanation put forth is the Air Force's acronym for Temporarily on Active Duty, in reference to the number of KC-135 pilots that rotate into the USAF between their day job of flying airliners. But apparently the toad nickname has a more dark and sinister past. The KC-135 began flying for Strategic Air Command in the late 1950s. This was during a time of rising tensions in the Cold War. Both the US and Soviet Union were positioning their bombers to either strike first or ensure a retaliatory strike, a strategy known as Mutual Assured Destruction or MAD. The newly entered into service KC-135 was to transfer close to their entire 200,000 pounds of fuel to airborne B-52s, who would then proceed on a one-way mission to their targets and deliver their nuclear payloads. Following the transfer of fuel, the KC-135s would just have enough fuel to break formation and either ditch into the water or over land. Needless to say, few KC-135 crews believe they survived the crash, and so they termed these one-way flights, take off and die, and the tanker towed moniker had been born. As for the designation of the aircraft itself, C is for cargo and K is for tanker, so the KC-135 is the tanker version of the cargo or C-135. And like any airplane that has been in service for decades, the KC-135 has lived under many nicknames besides its official straddle tanker designation. Some of these include the Flying Gas Station, the Straddle Bladder, and, as it has gotten older and required more maintenance, the Glob, or Ground Loving Old Bastard. The KC-135 evolved from the Boeing 367-80 Proof of Concept Demonstrator. Internally, this aircraft was known as the Dash 80. In 1954, Strategic Air Command held a competition to develop a jet-powered aerial refueling tanker. Boeing and Lockheed both responded, Boeing with a modified Dash 80, which was given the internal designation 717, and Lockheed with their Constellation II jetliner known as the L-193. Initially, Lockheed won the competition, but since the Dash 80 was already flying, the KC-135 could actually be delivered two years before the Lockheed model. The Air Force proceeded to order 250 KC-135s until the Lockheed design could be brought into service. Ultimately, the Air Force decided to go with one tanker and Lockheed withdrew their plans to build the Constellation II. Interestingly, from this, Boeing also developed an airliner version dubbed the 707. My good friend over at Found and Explained has a video all about the 707. Go ahead and check out that video after this one. Getting back to the KC-135, in 1954, the Air Force planned an initial order of 29 KC-135As. As mentioned previously, the KC-135 is actually one in a series of the C-135 aircraft, beginning with the original C-135 Strato Lifter and including variants such as the Reconnaissance RC-135 Rivet Joint and the Command and Control EC-135. Other notable variants include the NKC-135 Big Crow, which was used as a target simulator during flight testing of the Boeing YAL-1 airborne laser. The OCB-135B Open Skies Observation Aircraft, which provides mutual aerial observations to partner nations. And the WC-135 Constant Phoenix, which collects atmospheric samples to detect nuclear explosions. 
From 1957 to 1965, some 803 aircraft of the C-135 family were delivered to the Air Force, meaning that an average of 100 new airframes were delivered each year for eight years running. This also means that the newest KC-135 today was built all the way back in 1965. Here are some quick specifications for the KC-135R. Crew, three, consisting of a pilot, co-pilot, and boom operator, also known as a boomer. Length, 136 feet, three inches. Wingspan, 130 feet, 10 inches. Height, 41 feet, eight inches. Maximum speed, 504 knots or 0 0.9 Mach. Empty weight, 98,392 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 322,500 pounds. Fuel capacity, 200,000 pounds. Range, 1,303 nautical miles, with 150,000 pounds of transferable fuel. Ferry range, 9,572 nautical miles. Engines, four CFM International F-108 CF-100 turbofan engines, each which produce 21,600 pounds of thrust. Service ceiling, 50,000 feet. While initially developed as a support aircraft to enable strategic bombers to strike distant targets, the conflict in Vietnam soon proved the immense value of the Stratotanker. Thirsty F-105s and F-4s refueling from KC-135s made attacking far-flung targets possible, while allowing combat air patrol aircraft hours instead of minutes over station. The Stratotanker refueled Air Force aircraft and through the use of probe and drogue adapters, Navy and Marine aircraft as well. KC-135s also saved countless air crews by providing fuel to damaged aircraft that would have otherwise not been able to make it home. Desert Storm further cemented the KC-135's reputation as a force multiplier, allowing coalition air forces to conduct their round-the-clock sorties in the unparalleled success of the air war. Organizationally, the KC-135 served under Strategic Air Command or SAC until 1992. When SAC was inactivated in 1992, most KC-135s became part of Air Mobility Command or AMC, under which they still operate today. Despite growing maintenance costs due to its age, the KC-135 fleet is too large to be replaced outright, and current plans have the venerable Stratotanker serving until as late as 2040. The following is a list of nations that have or are operating the KC-135. Chile, France, Turkey, the United States, and Singapore. It is difficult to overstate the value and legacy of the KC-135, its ability to stay aloft for hours at a time and transfer massive amounts of fuel has literally changed the way air strategy and tactics are planned and performed. The old saying, you can't kick ass without tanker gas, is a testament to the KC-135's longevity and utility. While not as glamorous as fighters or even bombers, virtually every Allied pilot today has taken on gas from a strato tanker. Showing no flow. Showing no flow up here. So next time you come across a KC-135 crew, give them a quick thank you. They've earned it.